You may have heard the news of the ambassador to the United Nations for Myanmar. Um, he was appointed uh, a few months ago by the civilian government in Myanmar and came to New York City to be the ambassador. And on February 1st, there was a military coup in Myanmar and a military junta took over. Um, but he was still in New York City and still the ambassador. And last Thursday, he gave a speech to the United Nations denouncing the coup and denouncing the military leaders and asking for the community of nations to help restore democracy to the people in his country. Well, as you can imagine, uh, immediately the news came from Myanmar that he was fired. And undoubtedly, he'll have to suffer some repercussions, uh, or his family will. What he did was an incredible act of courage because uh, of the risk that he took. He knew that his speech would bring retribution, and so he was willing to sacrifice himself for the sake of his people. Well, in today's gospel story, Jesus knows that his words and his actions are going to bring him into conflict with the authorities. And he tells the disciples, the Son of Man will be rejected by the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And he will suffer and be killed and after three days rise again. And Peter refuses to hear this. He says, no, Lord, this must never be. Peter's idea of the Messiah is that Jesus is just going to become more and more popular and more and more influential and more powerful and, and one good thing is going to lead to another. And he doesn't even want to think about Jesus having to suffer. But Jesus will have nothing of it. He says, get behind me, Satan. Don't even tempt me with that idea. And Jesus then calls his disciples to live their own life of sacrifice. He says, if any would become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. In other words, any life worth living is a life of sacrifice. It's going to have some sacrifice in it. You know, these days we don't hear many calls for sacrifice. We hear a lot about entitlement and rights. You know, I deserve this, I deserve that, I have a right to this or to that. But Jesus talks about sacrifice. Mark may have written his gospel about the time that the early church was being persecuted, being shunned and, and driven out of the synagogue and so the words of Jesus may have meant a, an awful lot to that early church. Uh, yes, you're having to suffer, but so did our Lord suffer. So you're walking in the same steps that Jesus walked. Anything valuable, really valuable to us, is worth sacrificing for. If something is important, we'll sacrifice for it. Uh, you know, if we really want those concert tickets, well, we'll give up going out to eat for a few months so that we can afford the tickets. But it may be worthwhile to ask a larger question, and that is, what is it in my life that's worth sacrificing for? I think many of us would be willing to sacrifice for our family, uh, Many a mother would be willing to do anything to protect her children. I know that I've seen Katie become a mama bear when she thought her children were in uh, danger. And many of us have sacrificed our careers in order to be closer to our family. Some of us have uh, serving in the military as a way of giving to our country or uh, chosen a career that wasn't as lucrative as another career, as a way of showing how valuable it is to us. So we know what it means to sacrifice for our family and, and for things that are important to us. 
I read a story about a young man in Texas in the early 70s. He was probably about my age. He was a, a football star in high school. He was smart and good looking and uh, popular, had everything going for him. And then in a football game, he got hit really hard and it severed his spinal cord. And from that moment on, he was uh, paraplegic. And when he came home from the hospital, his mother had to learn how to take care of him. She had to learn how to uh, feed him and bathe him and change him and do everything for him. She ended up giving him 24-hour care uh, 365 days a year. Um, and together in the small, very modest house that they had, uh, she was a single mom and he was her only child. In that little house, they created a world together. And after the excitement wore off, nobody came to see them, and so their world was their own world together, where they watched television and, and read books together and created their own, their, their own life. So she gave up her life for him. When he was 53 years old, he got an infection and succumbed to it and died. And his mother died about three months later at the age of 84. So she gave up, she sacrificed herself for her son. I think we'd all like to say that we would do the same in the same circumstances. The things that are most important for us are the things we're willing to sacrifice for. And to be a follower of Jesus means to know about sacrifice. I don't mean that we're supposed to allow ourselves to be doormats or uh, to allow people to abuse us. That's not what it's about. We choose to sacrifice for the things that are important for us. And for a Christian, our relationship with God is the most important thing uh, because in God we live and move and have our being, as the scripture says, and God inspires and animates everything we do. Everything we live for flows from God. One of the turning points in my career as a priest was back in 2016 when we decided to have a capital campaign to raise money for our new building. I had never done anything like this before, and I was uh, shaking in dread of the idea of having to ask people to give a lot of money. But we did the right thing, and we hired a capital campaign consultant. His name was Mark Rieke, and he was a genius. And he showed us how to do this. And he started off with scripture and prayer. So it was a campaign about faith. And then he said, what you have to do is take your case to the congregation and tell them what is needed and why and give them the vision and then ask them to give. And so we, we did what he said and when the pledges started coming in, I was just amazed at the uh, amounts that people were giving. It was sacrificial giving. I shouldn't have been surprised because I know that People will give to the things that are most important to them. People will sacrifice to what's important. And that's what we did. In fact, a life without sacrifice is a life that's empty. Jesus says, those who would save their life, who would protect it and, and armor it and be selfish and miserly with it, they will lose their life. Uh, and what will it profit them to gain the whole world but to forfeit the things that are really important? You know, at a funeral we say uh, the deceased lived their life to the fullest. And what we usually mean is that they experienced life, the, the richness and fullness of life, and they didn't waste their time. I think we could say the same thing about Jesus. He lived his life fully and richly all the way up to the cross. 
He did everything that God called him to, and then he was willing to sacrifice himself for the sake of the people. You know, there's a Beatles song that says, the love you take is equal to the love you make. I don't know if the Beatles are the best theologians, but in this case, I think they've got something there. Uh, you know, at the time we sacrificed something, it seems like a loss. It seems like a loss of uh, pleasure or uh, time or money or freedom. But in the end, we find out that it's really a gain. For those who would lose their life for, the, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, we'll save it. Amen. Amen.